Um, she is a graduated Wings mom. Um, she was in residence with us for a little over a year. And um, so it's lives like hers that your donations impact. So you'll hear her story in a few minutes, or a minute. Um, <laughs> March this year, Wings celebrates its eighth year in the Durham region. And as a residential maternity home offering a safe alternative to young homeless pregnant moms and their babies, over the last eight years, housing 61 women has had its challenges financially, but its rewards far outweigh the difficulties. And because of your giving, we were able to give Christmas to 31 young moms in our community. And one of those, and that's also our residents got Christmas too, but outside of the residential moms, we, we gave Christmas to 31 moms. One of those moms, upon delivery of our gifts for her and her child, we noticed that she didn't even have a Christmas tree. So I said to her, where's your tree? And she said, I, I, I can't afford to get a tree. She didn't think she was going to get gifts. So we quickly ran to Walmart, picked up a tree, picked up all the decorations and brought it back and put the tree up with her and her three-year-old and put all the gifts underneath that tree so that on Christmas morning, her and her three-year-old can have Christmas. And that was because of the money that came in from 100 Women Who Care went directly into our Christmas fund as well. I shared the last time I was here a story of a young mom, a young resident who was at Wings, um, who had been um, brutally raped and conceived a child. And um, the news, the forwarding three more months now, she has since graduated out of Wings as living in Toronto. She's enrolled in a university course to study law. And through the support, we were able to help her get all of her essentials that she needed for her apartment making her apartment feel nice and homey for her and her daughter. So thank you for allowing us to impact the lives of so many young pregnant women. Destinies are being changed because of support like this. We put together um, this small Wings book this year, um, which mentions 100 women who care in the front page of our major donors. So we, it costs $18 to do the book. We're selling them for 20. It's not a fundraiser, it's really just a book that informs people of who we are and that we have some copies if anyone's interested in one you're welcome to come up and, and let me know. So thank you from all of us here at Wings um, and our moms and our team um, we were impacted very much by your giving. Um, I want to introduce you to Felicia. Um, she too was impacted by your giving and Wings was able to support her in her education which Felicia is going to share with you. Here's Felicia. because I no longer wanted to feel like a stranger in my own home. At nine, I needed those men to stop molesting me because these men were so broken that they gravitated towards children and I no longer wanted to be a victim. At 10, I needed my big brother to stand up and protect me and my two other sisters instead of joining in. But as it is, me and my sisters are incest survivors today at the hands of our brother. You're looking at a girl who smoked cigarettes daily since the age of 11, and who lost her virginity at the age of 13 to one of her mother's crack dealers, a dealer who to date was shot in the chest by a shotgun and was pronounced dead at the scene. I had no hope. I didn't even know what hope looked like. And even if it walked in the room, I may have just sauntered on by. 
As a girl, I was terrified to bring anyone of significance home because my mother always edged to sleep with them, trying to find her worth while stealing mine, which made me feel nothing but abandoned before it all even began. I can't even tell you how much I slipped away to isolated places. For hours that allowed the pain inside of my mind to unravel till the sun would set, just to see if anyone cared enough. Cared enough to find me or even notice that I was gone. But in the end, my worn out searching heart knew that I could be gone for days and yet my absence made no difference here. The world still went around for the people I loved without missing a beat. Adolescence was interesting. At the age of 13, my family and I were placed in the witness protection system because my parents' involvement with narcotics had my family shot at and landed us in the witness protection system, landing us in yet another new location. At 16, I was told to drop out of high school to help support the family. And I did, till at 18, I was kicked out of my home and homeless because baby bonus was no longer being issued and I was no longer a paycheck. I'm used to being the minority. I knew all of their thoughts, what all of my friends were thinking. Doesn't she know she's white? I don't know why she acts like she's so tough or black. With a small frame, decent face, and clothes that mask the reality of homelessness, they just didn't understand, and how could they? If I did my hair and my makeup, and was dressed in clean, trendy clothes, then at least it didn't look like I was homeless. Then no one would really know that I was without shelter, and in a strange way, it made me feel like I wasn't. At least if I hid behind a measure of physical beauty, then no one could ever see my realities, because everyone loves a pretty face, right? This drove me <laughs> to the arms of an extremely abusive man who I was convinced I loved because I didn't know my worth and I sure did not know that I mattered. This is a girl who wore physical chains and let a man beat her while determining her worth. A man who would handcuff me, her to his mother's basement the first night of meeting her and who soon hospitalized her. <laughs> So I found my safety and control in the obviousness of men because what they wanted was foreseeable and I could use them as a source of income. A measuring stick and a short exchange was all that was ever placed in my two hands and the walls of the world were building up at alarming rates. By 21 I had gone through 19 apartments, park benches, cars, centers and shelters to shelter myself in and landed myself a one-way ticket to Vanier Women's Correctional Facility jail. But no one heard the ringing. No one heard the ringing in my head, the screams, the voices, and suicidal attempts. No one cared to see behind the behavior, behind the hurt, behind the destruction, behind my entirety. Then at 22, I found myself pregnant and on my way to a shelter for homeless and misplaced pregnant women. Wings maternity home. I was a severe functioning alcoholic, addicted to cocaine and prescription pills. So suppose that one fateful day I never walked <laughs> into a home called Wings Maternity Home and had everything that I thought I knew about love completely and utterly demolished, challenged, and destroyed. When I first walked into this home, no word of a lie, when this miraculous life-giving and life-bringing woman, <laughs> burying cousins, would leave in the middle of night and not come back till the early mornings. Because of the way that I was raised, I was like, she's just out with her man on the down low because that's the only time she has away from us girls in my head. <laughs> that's how I used to speak. <laughs> When finally, one image shattering day, I found out truth, unexpected yet determined truth. This astounding woman of God would go to hospitals and sacrifice sleep to stay with moms, the drug addicted, family abandoned and struggling mamas, helping hold their babies and coach them through birth, 
when everyone else in their world had deemed them unworthy, deemed them alone, deemed them addicted and a statistic. She said, worthy of support, worthy of life, worthy of standing beside, worthy of loving the life that you bring forth. I didn't know that this kind of love existed. I didn't know and I couldn't have been more wrong. I was supposed to be deemed unworthy, alone, addicted, and on my own. But here it was, God's great love in full expression in one person. And I wanted it. I needed it. I breathed for it. So, as it is, I found my face in this home. The same year my daughter was being birthed into this world, her mama was being birthed into new life. But I won't bore you with how much respect honor and love I have for this woman sitting with us today simply because I just do not have the time. <laughs> so instead I'll get to the accolades. <laughs> today at 25 I have since graduated high school and received my secondary diploma through Wing School NAS program. I am currently enrolled in my second year in my second semester at Master's College and Seminary towards my Bachelor in Theology, <laughs> Woo. which Mary has personally and resourcefully continued the funding for. There was a point that I would tell this woman that she could not afford to keep sending me, <laughs> but she would respond with a simple, but you can't afford not to go. <laughs> so I can't express. <laughs> How much these finances truly need. Because I know this woman and I know her heart. And I know that she would get it all out of her own personal funds and it meant that I kept enrolled. I gave birth to a fearfully and wonderfully made little girl who brings light and purpose into everything and is very much a two year old at this point in the game. <laughs> but I can't blame her because she gets her heart to break strong will from her mama. So I want to thank you, Mary, for always giving me the opportunity to speak and pour into lives and hearts on behalf of Wings Maternity Home. And I want to especially thank 100 Women Who Care for making dreams like mine possible.